This week at Starbase, the build-out of the launch site's tank farm continues. Starship 34 undergoes several rounds of cryo-testing at Massey's outpost, and the final assembly begins on Tower 2's chopsticks. Now let's dig into this week's update. After the successful launch and return of Booster 14 the day before, construction work resumed at the launch site. Starting with Buckner's crane, the two Lieber LR-11000 construction cranes began raising their booms. SpaceX's own crane was next, but it paused shortly after it began, with the boom staying a short distance off the ground. Multiple trucks loaded with assemblies for the propellant farm arrived at the launch site. Various plumbing, a pair of valve assemblies, and manifolds were included in the shipment. A wastewater storage tank container of the same type used for holding fracking wastewater was brought to the launch site, possibly to store the deluge water after the launch. A storage tank for liquid argon was also brought to the launch site. After a short delay, SpaceX's crane finished raising its boom and both cranes were ready to get to work. Crews also took the first of the two previously delivered valve and manifold assemblies and moved it into place. While the second rack of tank farm hardware was lifted off its trailer, a new vaporizer arrived at the launch complex. Back at the build site, a new Starship forward flap was delivered. Starship 34 performed its first round of cryo-testing at the Massey outpost. The two propellant tanks were partially filled with cryogenics before the loading was stopped and the vehicle was detanked. The vaporizer that arrived earlier in the afternoon was eventually unloaded and set down near the ongoing propellant farm work. As the sun began to set over Starbase, Starship 34 underwent a full-scale cryogenic test with both propellant tanks filled to capacity and pressurized to flight levels. 26 hours after Booster 14's successful catch, the Super Heavy booster was lifted off the launch mount and set down on the transport stand. Starship 35's common dome section was brought out from Star Factory and taken to Mega Bay 2 for assembly. Booster 14 was eventually secured to the transport stand and released from the chopsticks, ready to begin its overnight journey back to the build site. After stopping at the gate and waiting for traffic to clear, it began its trip up Highway 4. The booster will undergo post-flight analysis, with engineers looking for ways to improve the vehicle's performance and to correct any deficiencies they find. One hour after setting off, Booster 14 arrived at the build site and stopped near the entrance to Mega Bay 1. With the booster out of the way now, the chopstick carriage for Tower 2 was brought to the launch site and set down at a staging area for assembly. Meanwhile, Booster 14 was moved out of the ring yard and into Mega Bay 1. A concrete pump truck set up for a new pour near the tank farm expansion, laying the foundations for the various supporting hardware that drives the propellant storage and loading systems at the launch complex. Four hours later, crews wrapped up the job and packed up the truck. While the crews wrapped up their work, one of the new vaporizers was raised vertically and moved into place at the tank farm. Workers began installing the chopstick carriage skates on Tower 2. These skates serve as the interface between the carriage and the tower rails, holding the arms to the tower while making sure they move smoothly. Crews also began rigging the chopstick carriage for lift, attaching the assembly to both of the Lieber cranes. Testing continued at Massey's on Starship 34, starting with a liquid oxygen tank. Over the next few hours, the ship's LOX tank would be drained, the methane tank filled, and the liquid oxygen tank refilled again. While the liquid oxygen tank continued to fill, the methane tank was drained. The liquid oxygen tank was then emptied out, marking the end of the test. With construction projects beginning to wrap up, several pieces of temporary construction fencing were brought through the build site back to the storage yard at Sanchez. Back at Tower 2, the cranes began a tandem lift of the chopstick carriage, rotating it vertically before maneuvering it into position on the assembly stand. After a bit of adjustment to trim and level the carriage, it was set down on the stand and secured in place. While Flight 7's booster was set down on one of Mega Bay 1's workstations, the transport stand was relocated to the rocket garden. The launch mount work platform, which was parked at the parking lot near Starhopper, was brought over to the launch mount. Starship 34 finished its test campaign at the Massey outpost and began its journey back to the build site. 
and three hours later, Ship 34 arrived at the build site and headed for Mega Bay 2. After a slow and uneventful Sunday, things picked up again on Monday. The chopstick arms were brought to the launch site for installation on the carriage assembly. The large size of the arms left them overhanging the sides of the transporters. These new arms are shorter than Tower 1's chopsticks, which makes them lighter and more responsive to the hydraulic control system. The arms also have a manifold rail designed for catching starships. A load of steel was delivered to the build site's main gate. This turned out to be the wrong gate, as the truck made a U-turn before turning back onto the highway and heading towards the Sanchez site entrances. The first leg of the chopstick assembly support stand was put into place with a second following shortly after. Another carriage skate was added to the second launch tower in the morning as work continues to move forward on chopstick installation. As inclement weather arrived at Starbase, the chopstick assembly stand crossbar was lifted into place. A full ring section for Booster 17's liquid oxygen tank exited Star Factory and was brought to Mega Bay 1 for assembly. Following an uneventful Tuesday, Wednesday began with the delivery of long diameter pipe segments to the launch site. A walkway for the chopstick sheave block was lifted up to the carriage before being taken down again, possibly as a test fit. A load of structural steel was also delivered to the launch site, supporting the ongoing build-out of the pad infrastructure. Additional pipe sections were also delivered. The sheave platform walkway was lifted up into place again and finally installed on the chopstick carriage. Test Tank 16 was taken out of Sanchez and brought into Star Factory. The last two chopstick carriage skates were installed on Tower 2. Once the carriage and arms are assembled, the chopsticks will be ready for mounting on the launch tower. The fuel downcomer for Booster 17 was brought out of the Star Factory and taken into Mega Bay 1 for installation. One of the valve assemblies delivered to the launch site was set down near the D2 Gates tank farm infrastructure. And thanks to our Eagle Eye Assets team, we can see the Tower 1 chopsticks being raised just off the hard stop at the tower base in the evening. Workers then performed a test fitting of the lifting pin for the Tower 2 chopsticks. This piece carries the full weight of the chopsticks as well as the ship and booster, so it's very important to make sure it goes together well. The first of the two chopsticks was moved closer to the carriage to be rigged up ahead of lift. And again, our awesome assets team caught Tower 1 chopsticks being set back down on the hard stop. Two more vaporizers were delivered to the launch complex on Thursday, bypassing the D2 gate and heading down towards the other end of the tank farm. Excavation work continues on the flame trench, with trucks moving dirt out of the way. Later that morning, the first of the new vaporizers was brought back up to the near end of the tank farm where cranes unloaded, uprighted, and put it in place. A concrete pump truck set up for another pour near the base of Tower 2. Around noon, the other new vaporizer, the fourth in a cluster of four, was also offloaded and installed. An aft section of Starship 35, part of the ship's liquid oxygen tank, was brought into Mega Bay 2. This section is just ahead of the barrel segment with the forward flap hinge and has heat shield tiles to match. The concrete pump truck quickly wrapped up its pour and was packed up for departure. A roofing panel was installed on the base of Tower 2, covering more of the draw works and machinery areas. Crews then began rigging the Buckner crane to the first chopstick, setting up the complex set of cables to hoist, rotate, balance, and level the awkwardly shaped arm. The Starship Thrust Simulator stand was brought to the ring yard. One of the build site cranes quickly began unloading counterweights from the transport before sending the stand off to the rocket garden. A super heavy booster grid fin emerged from Star Factory in the evening and was brought to Mega Bay 1 for installation. A second grid fin was brought out shortly before midnight. This week at the Cape, Bob returned to Port Canaveral on Friday carrying the fairing halves from the Blue Ghost and the Hakuta RM2 launch. Booster 1080 finished its stay at the docks and was lowered onto a transport for refurbishment at Roberts Road. Signet Warhorse 3 towed just read the instructions and Booster 1085 into port, returning from the Blue Ghost Hakuto launch. The booster was soon lifted off Just Read the Instructions and set down on the dockside stand. 
Support ship Harvey Stone and Blue Origin's landing barge Jacqueline returned to Port Canaveral on Saturday. They returned empty-handed after New Glenn's first stage was lost during the re-entry burn. The launch was otherwise successful, and a second launch is expected in March, pending the conclusion of the FAA's mishap investigation. Signet War Horse 1 towed a short fall of Gravitas out to sea on Sunday in support of the Starlink Group 13-1 mission. Doug then departed shortly after, heading out to collect the fairings from that launch. At Launch Complex 39A, Falcon 9 was raised vertically on Monday, ahead of the late-night launch of the Starlink 13-1 mission. With the flags flying at half-staff for the late President Jimmy Carter, Falcon 9 lifted off, carrying 21 Starlink satellites into orbit. Booster 1085 finished its stay at the docks on Tuesday and was laid down for its trip to the Roberts Road facilities. Doug returned to Port Canaveral with both fairing halves from the Starlink mission on a cold and rainy Wednesday. Signet Warhorse 1 returned with a short fall of Gravitas and Falcon 9 Booster 1083 on Thursday after the rocket successfully lofted Starlink Group 13-1 into space. The booster was soon taken off the landing ship and set down at the docks. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update with a tiny splash of Blue Origin brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.